Hello, my name is Simonize, and welcome to another Simonize Guide video. Phase 3 of Season of Discovery is on the horizon, coming out Thursday, April 4th, and we've got some data mined information about what might be changing for rogues in terms of runes, gear, talents, and some new poisons are in the data mine as well. I want to take this video to go over that stuff and look at some of the cool new things that might be coming. This is data mined information. It is not 100% verified, confirmed coming in phase three, but when we had the data mine for phase two, like 95% of that stuff ended up being in the phase. So no real problem. Let's dig into it, starting with the runes. Then we'll look at some talent builds, some gear and the new poisons. The first rune we're getting is Honor Among Thieves. This is a helmet rune that gives you a combo point whenever anyone in your party gets a critical strike with an ability. So you'll be basically flooded with extra combo points. When we saw this ability in Wrath of the Lich King, we found out that some classes offered way, way more Honor Among Thieves combo points for the rogue than others. I'd assume we'd have a similar thing in Season of Discovery where some classes are just gonna give more points than others. So how good Honor Among Thieves is for you is very likely gonna depend on what classes and what players are in your group feeding you combo points. The other helmet rune that we get, and yeah, we kind of only get two runes, I'll get to that later, is Combat Potency. This gives you a 20% chance to generate 15 energy every time you deal damage with with your offhand weapon. This is a super duper powerful energy generation effect and you're just gonna be able to do way more abilities, both combo point builders and finishing moves while using combat potency. The only real downside with using this rune is it makes it pretty restrictive on what offhand weapons you wanna be choosing because it puts a huge emphasis on picking the fastest offhand weapon possible. Now I said we only have two helm runes. Technically we have three and the third is focused attacks. This is another energy generation rune that comes in on the head slot, so it competes with combat potency. And the data mined version of focus attacks only gives you two energy per critical strike. You could give your character literally 100% critical strike chance, and this would still give you less energy than combat potency. This is Basically just a complete joke of a rune if it goes live at two energy per critical strike. Now what I am really excited for is all three of the wrist runes. The first wrist rune we're gonna look at is Carnage. Your abilities deal 20% increased damage to targets afflicted by your bleed effects. So that's if you open up from stealth with a Garrote, if you use Rupture finishing move, or if you're using Saber Slash Combo Point Builder, you're gonna put Rogue Bleeds on the target and then make all your abilities, which includes your poisons, deal 20% more damage to that target. This is pretty cool and pretty powerful, and it competes with another very powerful wrist rune for damage output, Cut to the Chase. This causes your Eviscerate and Envenom, pretty much just Envenom, we're not really casting Eviscerate, to refresh the duration of your Slice and Dice back up to its five combo point maximum. So essentially, you'll cast Slice and Dice once at the start of the fight, and then you'll just be able to spam Envenoms the whole rest of the fight. And Cut to the Chase versus Carnage look to be pretty similar in power level from my initial calculations, and they offer significantly different play styles, with Cut to the Chase being kind of relaxing, brain dead, spam some Envenoms, and Carnage being put up Slice and Dice, maintain Slice and Dice, put up Rupture, maintain Rupture, and do Envenoms with any of the remaining combo points. So whatever's more attractive to you, you'll be able to do, and probably do pretty good DPS with it. Now the final rune isn't really for raid DPS, but it is one I'm excited about too. Unfair advantage on the wrist. Cause you to do an instant main and weapon strike every time you dodge. Now, if you're tanking, this is a big DPS increase in a raid, but it's also really, really strong if you're trying to do soloing content. Like if you're trying to do a stealth run of the coffers in Blackrock Depths or to the Black Forge, or to try to solo farm the fiery weapon formula. There's a lot of stuff in Blackrock Depths or other dungeons you could be doing. An unfair advantage is a great rune to use while you're soloing stuff like that. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the runes coming out in this phase. Cut to the Chase versus Carnage offers two significantly different playstyles with, as far as I can tell right now, fairly balanced damage output, and Honor Among Thieves versus Combat Potency is an interesting decision with like Honor Among Thieves probably being better if you have a really optimized group for it, and other times 
combat potency being better, assuming you have that nice fast offhand weapon to best utilize it. Now with these runes, we're gonna have some talents, of course, and I think we're gonna just go a little bit deeper into the assassination tree, pick up a couple points of seal fate and into combat for improved backstab. And I would run the talents like this if I was doing cut to the chase. The important thing here is we don't have any points in improved slice and dice and we have more points in lethality. If we were gonna use Carnage, where we actually have to cast and refresh Slice and Dice during the fight, I'd take those lethality points out like this, put them into improved Slice and Dice, and there we go. Now for the gear, I have a 60 upgrades page set up on 60 upgrades. It's linked in the video description, and that's what we're gonna look at to look over some of the gear that we can be getting in this phase. For the helmet, glowing neuro-linked cowl that we crafted in Nomergon is looking to still be the best, unless there's something in the data mine that we haven't seen yet. And we'll probably have access to the Lesser Arcanum of Veracity from the Librum of Veracity to put eight agility enchants on our helm and leg. For the necklace, Bloodstained Charm of Valor is a very minor upgrade over our Nomergon Peace Officer's Torque, just plus two attack power and we lose out on the stamina, so you, you might not even want that. For the shoulders, we have Paranoia Mantle with a 15 attack power enchant, by the way. A Tall Eye Signet of Might was data mined as a shoulder enchant we might be able to get. Anyways, Paranoia Mantle, leatherworking crafted item, very, very strong. Until you get that, you probably want the failed flying experiment that we were using last phase, or Alliance can get access to the Cloud Drift Mantle with 12 strength, 12 agility. That is a Alliance only quest reward. For the cape, Panther Fur Cloak is looking like the best thing with 15 agility, six strength. And just a little bit behind that is Black Veil Cape with only one less agility. But Black Veil Cape is an item from Blackrock Depths Dungeon. And Blizzard has stated that they're gonna be revamping the loot from Blackrock Depths and Moradin. And this is the old version of Black Veil Cape. We haven't seen what any of that new revamped loot looks like. So it is uh, subject to change. For the chest, we have the Blood Corrupted Tunic, which is part of the Blood Corrupted Leathers set. That's the new set rogues are gonna have access to. It is only very, very small increase in damage output over the insulated leathers set we were using in the previous phase. So frankly, if I was deciding what loot I was trying to prioritize in Sunken Temple, I'd just keep my insulated chest guard set and put a really low priority on picking up the tier pieces in Sunken Temple. On the bracers, engineering are getting a crafted void powered slayers van braces, which appear to be the best bracers by just a tiny bit. The forest stalker bracers are one agility behind. And even if you're not exalted with your war song faction and you're not an engineer, we're gonna have Deep Fury Bracers as a perfectly acceptable alternative to either of those, which are much harder to get. Moving on to the weapons, we have Degraded Dire Nail, as well as Gurubashi Backstabber, looking like some of the strongest daggers we can get our hands on. And unfortunately, the fists and swords with Saber Slash don't appear to measure up to the Mutilate builds. Again, this phase being about 10% behind if you're going for Saber Slash anyways. These are some good main hand options, nice heavy hitting dagger. And for the offhand options, we're looking at Julie's dagger as a world drop. Skilled Fighting Blade is an Alliance only quest reward, or Shadow Blade is a BOE world drop. And the Warsong dagger is probably my least favorite out of all these options, but it's gonna be something pretty easy to get. If you already have that reputation, you can just buy it right at max level. For the gloves, we have Sergeant Major's Leather Gauntlets being just a little bit better than the Pathfinder's gloves, uh, which come from a quest in Winter Spring. And then presumably the foul smelling fighter's gloves probably come from the raid. All these are good options that are very close in performance. And certainly the easiest to get is this quest reward gloves of the Pathfinder. So that's probably what I'm going for. On the belt, Girdle of Bestial Fury is another Blackrock Depths item, subject to change, but currently looking like the best belt option. Other ones are our old engineering belt from phase two, or the Defiler's Leather Girdle from your Arathi Basin faction. That would be Highlander's Leather Girdle if you were Alliance. Legs and boots are the set. And again, the Blood Corrupted set, you know, you get all three pieces together, then you replace the insulated leathers and all that together is still just a very minor increase in damage. For rings, we got Drake Claw, Band of the Berserker and Band of the Wilds looking like they're probably gonna be the best ones. Mason's Fraternity Ring, Agility Bonus, Protector's Band or Legionnaire's Band from Warsong, and Blackstone Ring all being suitable alternatives. Roar of the Guardian is a 
pretty cool trinket giving a temporary attack power bonus that looks to be very strong and i would guess that this is going to come from the emerald nightmare faction associated with the emerald dream portals around the world that was teased in the preview video that blizzard put out but i don't know for sure a uh, horde can get access to rune of the guard captain a horde only quest in hinterlands offers a very powerful trinket if you are not horde if you are playing alliance you're going to look at avengers void pearl or the gyromatic experiment 18 attack power trinket from nomergon or maybe breadth of the beast as one of your alternatives finally on the range slot we have a lot of boe options with the best probably being precisely calibrated boomstick uh, i know you guys don't like seeing world drop epics as your best items but it is the way it is other alternatives include stinging bow stinging longbow skull spreading crossbow or gut buster all being pretty similar so i wouldn't worry too much about spending a huge amount of money trying to get a precisely calibrated boomstick or whatever anyways this whole set is linked in the video description if you want to check that out there is one more thing i want to talk about in the video so let's go back to the powerpoint presentation that is the new poisons that we're getting the sebaceous poison and there were two other ones that give an attack power reduction and attack speed reduction but the one everyone's talking about is sebaceous poison now the first thing to note about these is that they do require level 60 so unless something changes and they introduce lower level versions of them we don't expect to see these until phase four this is a poison that applies an armor debuff that's equivalent to a five point expose armor debuff so it makes it certainly much simpler to apply improved exposed armor as a rogue and offer that armor debuff utility to your team. But the major armor debuff is not something that is unique to rogue. Also, warriors can do it. Also, priests can do it. It's just that rogue's armor debuff is a little bit stronger than those classes. The problems with this item are twofold. One, it has limited charges. And if you've done any rogue tanking this phase, you know how annoying it is to deal with limited charges on your poisons, having to refresh them all the time and sometimes having it fall off mid combat if you forgot to refresh it can be pretty frustrating. So I'd like to see that change and have sebaceous poison go to have uh, unlimited charges. The other thing is the negative interaction this has with your deadly brew rune. If you apply sebaceous poison to your weapon, your deadly brew rune is no longer gonna cause you to trigger instant poison with that weapon. So you lose one weapon's worth of instant poison damage to do this sebaceous poison. And that's a pretty big deal. You're probably losing in the realm of like nine to 11% of your damage, which is frankly, probably more damage loss than actually just casting Expose Armor as a finishing move. Now, there are some advantages to this, and this is that, you know, pretty much any mob that the rogue attacks will get this armor debuff within the first, like, two seconds. So you don't really have to think too hard about it, but it is just kind of a big DPS loss to use. So a little bit of mixed feelings on this. I really feel like it's not asking that much for rogues to have some kind of utility they can provide to a group that doesn't incur a massive DPS loss. There's a whole bunch of examples of abilities from other classes that are either just applied out of combat incurring no DPS loss, or, you know, one global every two minutes for some of these is the extent of the DPS loss these classes have to do to provide benefit to the team. And I'm concerned that Rogue lacking any real group buffs or group utility like this is gonna mean that we're gonna see the same thing that happened in phase two happen in phase three. You know, if we're not on top of the damage meter, no one's going to want to invite us to raids because why would you invite a mid-tier DPS with no utility when you could just invite a mid-tier DPS that does give utility? So I really hope it doesn't go down like that. I hope there's some buff or debuff that Rogue can apply without incurring a giant DPS loss that'll make us desirable inclusions in a group. Even if there is no such debuff and we're again not very desirable in raids, I'm still looking forward to phase three. I'm really excited to try doing some stealth farming in Blackrock Depths. I remember doing that back at level 60 in Classic Era and I wanna see what's possible to do at level 50 in Season of Discovery. Now, before I close out this video, I do have to put in again the disclaimer I had at the start. This is all based on data mined information. It is not 100% finalized, confirmed, or assured that these things are coming. But like I said, with the phase two data mine, like 95% of the stuff that was data mined ended up in the phase. So I think it's 
reasonably likely that this stuff is happening. If you want to see me playing Season of Discovery live, I will be doing so Thursday. My Twitch stream is normally live Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. EST to 6 p.m. EST, but with the release of Phase 3, we'll definitely be doing some weekend streams. That's linked in the video description. With that, I say thank you for watching. I hope you're having fun in Season of Discovery and you're as excited for Phase 3 as I am, and I hope you have a great day.